Hi, just an update on the Uber self-driving autonomous car uh, fatality that I did in a previous video. It's not looking good for Uber as uh, you could have guessed. Um, the, all the stories coming out uh, at the moment are that um, Uber uh, disabled Volvo's SUV safety system before the fatality. And well, this is actually not uh, surprising because they have to install their own autonomous system that's what they're testing their own one with their own what is it seven cameras the scanning laser lidar on top the radar and you know their own sensor suite of packages that they have to do this so they probably didn't want the cars um, existing collision avoidance systems actually interfering with that so yeah it's not surprising that they did that but uh or what it sounds like deliberately de defeated the collision avoidance system which as we'll see probably could have detected this incident and automatically break the car if it was a factory volvo xc90 that we're looking at here and um the reason that these stories are coming out is because the supplier aptive um, of these systems which uses the intel mobile i chipset which we'll take a look at uh, has come out and they want to distance themselves from this saying that hey our system could have uh, detected this and it wasn't used. They actually, uh, they must have disabled this. And, and actually Intel themselves, which manufacture the chipset, here it is. They actually took the very poor quality dark dash cam footage. So they took the secondhand dash cam footage, fed it through their mobile eye chipset that's used in the factory XC90, which Uber is the car Uber used for their... Uh, or, autonomous uh, driving cars and also the car used in this incident and it was able to detect the pedestrian coming across with their uh, walking their bicycle across a second before uh, it happened so of course it would have processed that maybe in a like a tenth of a second say 0.1 seconds so it probably would have had almost a second to decelerate and of course if that was the case then um, they couldn't have probably prevented the accident. The car couldn't have stopped in time. It wouldn't have had the distance to do that from, what is it, 43 miles an hour or something that the car was actually traveling at. But hey, it would have lessened the impact. And um, and that's from just the secondhand really dark dash cam footage as we'll see later on in this video. So they're saying, look, our system would have performed much better if it was a factory Volvo. And it sounds like Uber have deliberately disabled that. So that could get them into a lot of trouble. Um, anyway, let's have a look at the Volvo um, XC90, which is, uh, this is the 2017 brochure, but as we'll see, the technology's been around since like 2013, I think. Um, and it's used in lots of cars. Volvo aren't the only one that have it, the XC90. Lots of cars on the market, even your cheaper ones now, have these collision avoidance uh, detection systems. Not only lane guidance, but uh, detection avoidance as well. Here it is. It's looking out for you. City safety, blah, 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 blah. City safety can identify other vehicles, pedestrians, cyclists, and large animals in your path. It, want, it warns you of any hazards and, if necessary, will brake automatically to help avoid and mitigate collision. So there you go. Um it's built in to the car and even like older model cars it's got exactly the same you know 2016 brochure and going back and if we have a look at uh, mobile eye here it's now an intel uh company and i've actually done a teardown video of one that was uh used in a hyundai i'm not sure which hyundai it is but it uses the um the older technology uh the q2 uh chipset and you can see the camera here it's got just a built-in camera with a very high data uh, rate through to the chipset because this thing does like, I think the new chipset, the Q3, does 0.25 trillion operations per second. So it's really amazing. I'll show you in a second what it can do. So this is generally mounted up in the front of the car. I'm not sure of the exact details of the XC90 used in the uh, Uber here, uh, used by Uber here, but um, it would have had a similar camera and they must have disabled this module which could have detected and automatically braked um, for pedestrians and things like that so anyway it's very impressive what this uh, technology can do so we'll just roll some footage here and of course look at a detection tracking of all the pedestrians cyclists people walking across cars in front and it can do lanes of course this is daytime so obviously it's going to uh, perform really well but you can see how advanced this is and this is not new 
And if we have a look here, you can see that the one that I tore down, the iQ2 chipset, that's actually from 2010. But the uh, Q3 chipset dating from 2014 that's used in lots of cars on the market, not only the Volvo, um, it's got autonomous uh, braking system for uh, pedestrian, it even does animal detection and things like that. Holistic path planning, road uh, lane reconstruction, um, and all sorts of collision avoidance. So it's not, and if you actually go and look at um, some of the videos, they're actually... Uh, quite old here look uh four years ago volvo collision avoidance systems demonstrating here you go there's mobile eye stuff uh dating pedestrian collision warning systems dating back to 2012 this is not uh new technology and at night time as well you might think it's just daytime but here is uh the mobile eye chipset at night it can detect all these cars it can detect the lanes and everything else and this is really quite low light uh footage i'm not sure what you know camera uh, is if, if that's the actual camera used in the car or not or whether or not that's a secondary and they're just uh processing it but you know even at night time it's still very impressive and it's amazing what it can do in crowds here just check it out it's detecting all these people and uh, crossings and all sorts of like it's fan it detects arrows on the road it, it's like practically just built into this mobile eye chipset which uh, started out as just a lane guidance uh type warning thing is incredibly advanced now with its 0.25 trillion operations per second and it can uh, look there's a zebra crossing and there's people and it can do uh, it can do most things that an autonomous car can do with just the camera it's really amazing and Volvo uh, made the news back in uh, 2015 in that their system couldn't actually detect kangaroos here in Australia hopping across the road and it's a huge problem here in Australia, seriously, like especially at uh, dawn or dusk when because uh, kangaroos are typically nocturnal animals. They come out um, in the twilight and at uh, night and they hop across the road and you can't see them. Anyway, their software wasn't designed to detect the hopping of the kangaroo. It would actually uh, confuse them. So they actually came to Australia in their XC90 and they um, <laughs> actually, look, updated their software. You can see it actually detects the kangaroos hopping across the road and they updated their software to actually uh, you know uh, to get this an anomaly just here for Australian conditions so they're they're really on top of this stuff um, and that was back in 2015 so yeah um, anyway Volvo haven't commented on this uh, yet probably for you know um, sensitive legal reasons I guess but yeah uh, mobile I um, Intel mobile I and uh, Aptiv who supply the sensors have come out and said yeah even using the crap dash cam footage we could have detected that now of course you saw the footage in the previous uh, video and warning I will actually um, show it again here so uh, it does show someone getting hit by this uh, autonomous uber um, and, but you saw that footage was really dark and it was almost appeared as though they come out of the shadows but of course that has to do with the type of sensor used uh, its exposure conditions and and contrast and all sorts of you know other things so um, there are quite a few people who actually went out and went to the same location where this accident happened at night and actually shot footage of what it's actually like um, but this um, YouTuber here actually uh, shot this footage in 2015. It just happened to be of the exact same location where it happened, and this was shot with a stereoscopic camera out the top of the uh, sunroof of the car. So let's actually roll that, and you can see the bridge here. This is the bridge that um, it's just past this bridge where it happened, and you know, see my video, a previous video for look, but you like you can see it, here's the dark shadow that the pedestrian and it happened right about here but you can see that there was still plenty of light there to actually see this so it shouldn't have been a, a big problem and here's somebody who um strike engine car tv actually um went and shot footage look what looks like on a uh, mobile phone and with the actual footage and him warning here it is and the cyclist will come out any second here and they sync that up and you can see that even with the crap sensor in what looks like presumably a, like a mobile uh, phone it, it's really easily able to see that so yeah um, the footage provided by that uh, dash cam um, from uber is I, I don't know it's like it's some old technology I don't know what's going on there 
um, but that is really very dark uh, that footage it, it really is quite remarkable when you saw it it's like wow look look how dark that is it's amazing whereas the actual visibility and these are time synced apparently um, huge difference so yeah uh, not sure what's going on there and here's another one coming up to the bridge it looks like this is shot with a uh, mobile phone as well just handheld by the looks of it let's have a look and you can see look you can eat a pedestrian on the side of that here's the shadow it happened right here so like there seems to be no shortage of light there yes there is a dark shadow that just happened to be in that spot but geez if a tiny sensor in a phone can detect that yeah it's not looking great for uber is it so there you have it just wanted to share the uh, update on that and how lots of cars on the market have this system that probably could have detected this just with visual cameras but the uber has the scanning laser lidar on the top just spinning around um, update rates we've had comments on the previous video from people who've worked on those systems and and they actually give the resolution of that uh lidar and from memory i think they said like three two or three centimeters resolution or something like that updating uh at least <clears throat> 10 times a second don't quote me on that but yeah it it should have been able to detect it just the lidar alone let alone the radar and let alone the seven cameras that they got on there don't know how many are pointing forward probably at least a couple could have detected it as well or should have so yeah it ain't looking good for uber anyway leave your comments and thoughts down below and uh, i'll link in my uh the teardown video of that uh, mobile eye uh sensor the older technology one at the end. Check it out. Catch you next time.